Hello gorgeous you. Uh, today we are going to be making a peach and passion fruit trifle. Um, as usual it's very easy to do and it's very delicious and I will get straight into the recipe. So first things first I'm just going to prepare the fruit. So I've already got most of the passion fruit taken out, cut open and put in here. So I'm just going to do this three so you can see that it's perfectly normal. Although they look a little bit alien inside if you're not used to passion fruit, they smell and taste amazing. They literally are the smell and taste of the tropics. Um, even though I don't ever remember having any passion fruit in Barbados, they always remind me of Barbados when I have them, which is crazy. Um, but, you know, it just smells of the summer and it tastes of the summer. So I'm just going to do these, oops, just do these few. And we must remember, or I must remember, because uh, I do have a habit of being a bit forgetful, like, like all of us at some point or another in our lives, that we need to save some of this passion fruit for the end as a topping for the trifle, just to make it look all nice and sexy. And also the same with the peaches. Now, while I'm doing this last one, just before I get to the peaches, I'm going to talk to you very quickly about this, which is my... I call it my nicer dicer slicer. It has a proper name, which I can't for the life of remember. Got it for as a wedding present. It was on the wedding list, believe me. It was one of the most coveted gifts I wanted. Um, it does everything. It's brilliant. All sorts of different selections. But just to warn you with these things, like any other kind of um, mandolin slicer, the blades are sharp enough to do surgery, um, of which I have found out the hard way. Um... So now I've just I've just realised I didn't even show you I scraped these all into here from the centre. So that's all of them, all of them in there. You see, it it doesn't. I'll be honest with you, it looks a little bit frog spawny, but the smell. Oh God! It's it literally it. You will think you're on a, a beach somewhere, and um, you know, for those of us who haven't managed to get a a holiday in recently, that is very welcome. So. For the peaches, get all the peaches, and um, we have to slice them up. Now I'm taking them out in quarters. Now you could easily just slice them up by hand with a knife, that's no problem. But for me, I am going to use the mandolin because it does give me some nice even slices. It just helps our, you know, not hurt the hands. I don't know if you saw how I took that off. Just cut it in half all the way around. It doesn't even have to be neat and tidy. And then, Make sure you get it right to the centre of the stone and then twist, it comes off. It's the same with the stone. With the last quarter, just hold the stone, pinch it, twist, out it comes. So simple. No need to start hacking it and cutting it. It literally does its own thing. So you can just slice these quarters if you want. I am going to use, 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 I'm going to use the mandolin and always with the guard. Because, as I said, this is super sharp, super scary, super painful when uh, when you do catch yourself. As I said, I, I did do in the early days before I I realised it just wasn't worth the A and E time. Um, here we go. It's the last slice I'll just chuck in there. And with the half, cut it in a quarter. So you get roughly, roughly similar slices each one. Just do that, get the last bit done there, and pop that in, and the last quarter here. Here we go. So, I mean, you could use anything else as well. As I said, I always like to know if you want to mix and match the recipes, change it to something else, nectarines, plums, uh, damsons, whatever's in season, really. I mean, I'm surprised that nectarines are passionate in season, but they probably aren't probably out of season but let's just carry on with the recipe shall we right so also what you're going to need to do is put an orange in so i've given it a bit of a roll i always think if you give fruit a bit of a roll don't you need to get oh, beautiful orange oil you um also manage to sort of break it up a little bit inside because it can be quite tough so i've got my do you know what i found out what this was called um the other day uh, there's a special name for it which i've forgotten 
So when I find it out, I'll put it in the description with the recipe. So you'll know what this is because they're easy to get. You don't normally get the plastic ones. They're usually wooden. Does the same job, absolutely fine. Probably more environmentally friendly as well. But um, this is a godsend. Oh, there's some pips in here. I thought this was a seedless one. And uh, I don't know if you've got the experience, but I have the experience of biting on a pip. No, it's not horrific. It's not pleasant. So that's better. I've just asked Simon for a bowl because I suddenly thought if the pips fall into the passion fruit, I'll never see them. And um, it won't make me very pleasant. I mean, it's not very pleasant when you get a lemon pip in a, in a savoury dish, but oh, they're a bit bitter. So in a sweet dish, that would really, that would really ruin the mouthful. Oh, see, and there's another one. I would not have spotted that. Oh, she says dump it all in the bowl. I would not have spotted that, so it's a good thing I did do it in the bowl. Let's pray that the few little drops I put in the bowl didn't have any seeds in. I'm sure we'll find out. It's only for the family anyway, and I'm sure they'll forgive me. So, let me just get that all out of the way. So that is the orange juice, which, if I just check, no, nope, no seeds in there. And that goes in with the passion fruit. Just get my towel just to wipe my hands off because I've got orange juice all over them. And just wipe this down a bit. Keep it a bit clear. There we go. Right, so next port of call is to whip the cream. And it's double cream. You can't use single. Even if you want to make this uh, vegan and you use um, a vegan cream. There are a lot of lovely uh, plant-based uh, cream substitutes around and you must get the double. Um, I've heard that Emily Plant Double does actually whip up quite well. That's just a room, I haven't tried it myself, but if you want to make it a vegan thing, then that's what I have been recommended. So this is gonna be noisy, so I shall get it started, give it a whiz up and then, oops, fluff in the air and then I will um come back to you and uh turn the volume back on so I shall see you in a mo oh that took longer than normal well it probably didn't actually it was um it just seemed longer than normal to me but it was only about five minutes so where we go from now so I'm just gonna put this to one side and just pull over this mascarpone and it needs to be mixed into oh, there's a bit of a bit of lemon in here. Not oh, lemon, orange bean. Right, so just getting the mascarpone, and it's a beautifully soft cream cheese. Normally, it's used for tiramisu. I find. I mean, obviously, there's a million other reasons you can use it for creamy pasta sauces and whatnot. But I know this is a one of the key ingredients in a tiramisu. So. It's got an absolutely gorgeous and very flexible taste. It's not as um, cheesy as like a Philadelphia cream cheese, um, but it, you get all the creaminess and um, all the wonderful texture and just slightly less of the, of the cheesy flavour. So it's absolutely perfect for this. So I'm going to mix this up with the icing sugar. Let's just put that there. Oh, and the vanilla. I mustn't forget a little dab of vanilla. So that should be enough. I'll make a little bit more. Just for luck. So um, this is going to be, I was going to use the, the blender again, just to beat it in and make it soft. But I'm just going to mix in the icing sugar a little bit because if I put the blender on this, you will lose me in a massive cloud of icing. Some may say it's a good thing, but really if you're going to watch the video to try and make this, it might not actually be that good. So here we go. Right, I've got rid of most of the icing on that. So you don't have to worry about cleaning the beaters. I use this to do the cream and that's absolutely fine. That's why I did the cream first. So I knew the cream would be okay. So let me just pop that over there. So what I'm going to do is do this and then um, just beat it for a bit. But obviously because it's very loud, I'm just going to beat this for a couple of minutes and then I will come back to you when I finish beating it. Okay, see you now. So I probably beat that for like about a minute, if that. It wasn't long at all. Just tried to arrange this over here so everything doesn't fall. Um, so yes, just gonna scrape this down the side because the mascarpone being a little bit thicker 
did get quite feisty and it uh, flew a few places so I'll probably be finding it later on so mild worry but hey worst things happen at sea right so I'm just going to move my beautiful trifle bowl out of the way mm. <laughs> bowl that's fun. right now I'm going to start mixing in the whipped cream if I just do the first little bit just to loosen up the mascarpone because what we don't we don't want to lose all that lovely um, air we've beaten into this whipped cream but the mascarpone is actually quite heavy so what we need to do is just loosen it up a little bit with one bit of the whipped cream and then it'd be much much easier to fold in with less likelihood of the um, the nice you know losing that lovely whipped sensation from the cream so what really loves this wooden spoon it won't go off it mind you it is very very delicious so what i was going to say to you so as well as doing different kind of fruits and things in this um you can also it's totally up to you how much sugar you put in um the recipe has a certain amount to put in but again some people don't like that much sugar sometimes the fruit is really really sweet and you want to have a bit more of a savory contrast because don't forget there's also cake in this um it does say brioche or cake but as it was my daughter's birthday recently i had some offcuts and some very nice if i say so myself um madagascan bourbon vanilla cake which i made um and i just thought no normally i just let simon have them he's mad for offcuts in fact your whole family are pretty mad for offcuts but i thought well no i'll save these and I will make it in something a little bit more exciting because um, we get every couple of weeks we get a selection box of fruit and vegetables that would automatically normally go to landfill or be wasted. So we rescue them and we'd rescued passion fruit and peaches. And I saw this recipe and I thought, well, that's just perfect for the cake, for the leftover cake. So that's what we're doing. So I'd say that was perfectly well mixed in. It's quite nice and chunky, as you can see. So, let's get to constructing this. So let me just get this trifle. How fab is that? I was in the sale, I just had to have it. <laughs> so now it's just an incentive to make trifles. Oh, shame, eh? Funny enough, I don't seem to get bowls that get me an incentive to make kale. Oh, I don't actually like kale, so I can't really knock that. I know I don't look like it, but I love my greens. Right, so here we go. So this cake, just some old cake left over um you don't want to make it into sort of too many crumbs it's just sort of crumble it up a bit so you get chunks biteable chunks probably better and just get a few on the bottom to make a nice base and i need to leave some because it's going to be a layered thing so here we go let me see is enough left for another layer is there enough left? yeah probably I should just realise it's a wider layer because it goes out like that, so I probably should leave some more. So, And the next thing I do is spread over some of these. I think this teaspoon is going to be a little bit tiny. So spread over your passion fruit, half, roughly half, into the, into the um, over the cake or the brioche, whichever you decide to use. Like I said, I like to use up um, stuff that we've got. I don't want to waste it, so this is just a really ideal recipe to use up um the leftover cutoffs from the cake and the other thing is um it's actually it's a little bit old this only lasts for about a day i'll be honest with you it doesn't have a very long sell-by date um so the fact that the cake i've used is oh let's see what's the day say it's from about four days old which although most of my cakes they say to people you could probably eat up to five days it's usually if they're covered with buttercream or fondant or something like that it gives it extra protection for the moisture this has been in a bag so that has obviously been protected um and it is okay at least for another day so it is sort of old cake so if you have some old cake lying around if it's gone a bit dry or something like that, this is absolutely fine because the uh, passion fruit and orange mix and stuff will soak in rehydrate it plus it'll give you a nice uh you know texture difference between the um the cream and the fruit so i'm just going to pop this cream in now and um you could also just to say you could put the the peach bits directly down 
but I've done this slightly differently because the peach bits slide around a bit too much for me. So I made a right mess on the edges. Look at that. It's supposed to be neat and tidy. Not really, is it? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's going to be eaten. Um, I've had the peaches slide around, so I'm doing it differently. But, you know, if you fancy doing the layers, it's traditionally supposed to go cake, uh, passion fruit, peaches, and then mascarpone. But as I said, I'm doing it slightly differently because they're quite slippy slidey. And the mascarpone and the cream is actually quite stiff. So, you know, if you want to do it the normal way, do it, do it the normal way. That's absolutely fine. In fact, I shall put that in the description that, you know, the normal way is this. My way is that. Um, it just, it's just so slippy slippy. Um, I mean, I suppose, actually, I've, if I had brains about me, I could have put the peaches down underneath the mascarpone and piped the mascarpone on. And then that would have stayed. So there's a tip. If you want to do it the proper way, which is proper layering, then... Um, use a, a piping bag or an old food bag which you've just cut a hole in the corner and uh, that should be absolutely fine so let me just i need to just leave a few for the top so that should be fine for the top right so next bit again layers of cake so just crumble it so it's bite-sized pieces on the top don't put a spoon in there Oh, it smells good. Smell the vanilla smell from the cake. I love, I love when you get that burst of vanilla. It's so, so delicious. Here we go. I'll spit out. Sorry, Sim. None left for you. And uh, just cover it up like that. So you've got a nice new layer. Thankfully, those messy mascarpone bits are going to get hidden. And then we're going to put some of this on, but don't forget to save a little bit for the top. Oops, it's just make, I make such a lot of noise with this, haven't I? There we go. I think I'll just save the next bit for the top, actually. That last little bit on that corner there. There we go. I'll pop a couple of these on just for, just for the sake of it. Right. And now, the last of this goes on top, looking sexy. See what I'm saying? I've only got a few peaches on there. And as I move this around, it... Um, it moves with the peaches. So, you know, as I said, if I was piping it, it would be absolutely fine because you could direct where the cream or mascarpone is going to go. But putting it on with a spoon, it's a little bit... You've got to really be a bit careful and sort of slowly spread it from the centre. So I'm glad I didn't put any more peaches there because that would have driven me crackers. Right, so that's the last little bit there. I mean, I'm going to get all of this out as it seems to really love this wooden spoon and refuse to come off it. Just get the cake off that and use that. There we go. There we go. Don't waste all that loveliness. Fan would never forgive me. There we go. Any more in there? No, it's fine, it's fine. So, sorry, this has been all very much me looking down, so do forgive me that I've not actually given you enough attention. I'm very sorry about that. And I promise on my other videos I shall give you lots more attention. But for this one, I've had to kind of watch what I'm doing. So, just give it a good old swirl at the top. Pop that in there. And then, just get the last... Actually, I was thinking, what did I put? Yeah, I, put, I think I'll put these first. I was going to put this first and then the, the peaches. But although the peaches have got some lovely colours on them, I can get them out. Just to sprinkle across, I think that... Um, the passion fruit always gives a wonderful, wonderful um, effect with the beautiful different seeds and stuff. And for those of you who haven't had passion fruit before, the seeds are very crunchy, very sort of hard, but they're supposed to be. That's how it is. So just pour that on the top like that. Just drizzle it around. Just put the last lot there. And there we have it. That's it. How simple was that? Really, really easy. Obviously, I've made a best, but it wouldn't be me if I hadn't. And uh, that's your trifle. So you can see, let me just show you all the loveliness on the top there, the peaches, sliced peaches and the passion fruit uh, with the orange mixed in, um, layered up with the gorgeousness of cake and more fruit juice and cream. And as I said, it lasts for a day. Store it in the fridge. Um, 
to be honest, I don't think it would last longer than a day. If you have it out at a party or for a dessert for some sort of dinner, um, it is absolutely scrumptious, very Moorish. And uh, again, if you choose different fruits, different styles, oh, wow, you could even like do a chocolate mascarpone um, and put in strawberries and raspberries and stuff like that. Oh, that'd be lovely. Um, use uh, an almond cake with the chocolate one. That would be a lovely, lovely change. So anything you fancy doing, improving, changing, whatever, please do, do let me know. Tag me um, or leave a comment, whatever. Um, any questions, please just get in touch as you know. Um, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And I really, really look forward to seeing you again soon. So take care and see you soon. Bye.